And what right. we want to wake you up to today is like, your those same friends are right. not going to be there at 60 years old. And trust right. me, your friends, when you're a millionaire, a multimillionaire, and you right. own hundreds of homes and yes. thousands of units like Carl and I do, yes. that uh, you won't, you'll have different friends, right? You hang 100%. out with different people. And so to think more long-term, yes. not what is everyone thinking about when I'm 18? Right. We want right. to help you think what's everyone, who, who are you going to be hanging with when you're 35? Wow. All right. So what's up, everybody? Uh, we got Carl here with us again today. Listen, we're talking about financial literacy, uh, what you should know, what you want to know, what we wish we would have known at 18 years old. Right. And so because this is the stuff they're not teaching you in high school. Who do you want to learn from your teacher who makes what, 60 K a year? No offense to them, but that's just what they do. Or a guy like Carl who drives a Maserati to the gym. Um, <laughs> Carl, so let's get into this, man. Financial literacy. Yeah. Yeah, man, I just I just think that it, that it's uh it's just so un overlooked, right? This 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 not taught in school. Um, I had to learn this on my own, uh, and I think when you take a step back and you start thinking about you know the decisions that you make at eighteen will will impact you for the rest of your life. You might make that decision differently. Um, so, for an example, if you're going to school and you want to go to a four year university, do you pick Syracuse that requires sixty seventy thousand dollars a year? Or do you go to a maybe a, a junior college or a state school and that's maybe a little bit less? Because what they don't tell you is after you're done with school, you know, now you've racked up 250000 They put on interest on top of that and you're paying that the rest of your life. So, so Carl, break this down real quick because this is really yeah. helpful. So let's say the, the traditional, I want this is what we're going to talk about, traditional advice, traditional financial advice, yeah. right? What we would say is a, good decision that your parents say go to college get a degree da 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 walk that scenario out for us yes, what 100%. most people end up in 20 years from now and then i want to get into what maybe could be different to help people really get financially free yeah right, right? So like the, the, really build a foundation yeah so if you're if you're lucky enough to get through high school they, your parents tell you go to college right and so you go to college you the first day on on the college campus there's you know the the booths that have the credit cards you get a credit card you start trying to build your credit, your, your credit, and, and the the credit card vendors tell you just charge it on your credit card. It, you'll worry about it later. You pay the minimum balance for the next four years. So then, after four years, fast forward, then you, you get out of college. You have two hundred and fifty thousand dollars in debt because of student loans. You have ten thousand dollars in debt because of credit card loans. There's interest accruing on that debt. The next decision that you that you have, and, and they tell you is to, you, you go get, go get a house, go buy a house. So then you then you go buy a house and depending on what place you live in in the country, you know, 200, another 250,000 to a million dollars if you live in, in Southern California where we live. Uh, and so and then after you buy that house, you get married. Right. So and then that's another twenty five, fifty, hundred thousand dollars in debt. By the time you're done, you've got a half a million dollars of debt. Right. So with a half a million dollars of debt, you don't have time to think. You are doing your job every day. You are going to make sure that you pay the minimum benefits, minimum balance, because your credit could get impacted. So you're just going from a day to day grind, trying to get that, trying to get that, you know, that balance down. And the reality is, is Ellis, is that you will never get there. If you pay the minimum balance for the rest of your life, you'll be 60 still having student loan debt. And that's what they don't teach you in, 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 in school. That's what they don't teach you in high school. The, the, the other route or the alternative route is if you're not good in high school, but you are good in real estate, do you actually really need to go to college, right? So that's the first decision that you make, right? Do I need to go to college? If the, if the answer is yes, do you go to community college for two years? That's almost free. Do you try to get grants and loans that or, or excuse me, grants that are that you don't have to pay back? Can you go to a state school that's half the cost of those universities that, that I mentioned before, like a Syracuse or, right. you know, University of Michigan? Carl, um, this, let me pause you for a second because yeah. I want to hit something that's, that will strike a chord. For, and and this, is, this is why I love this man because we, we represent really two, two different communities, two different upbringings in a lot of ways. And so I want to ask you about the African-American community, but let me speak my, uh, to what I grew up. And like when you say when you say – a, a tech school or you know things like that 
that was in, in a lot of ways, and I think a lot of people don't go down that route. The reason they go down the more traditional route is because that's what celebrate. It's almost looked down to go do the alternative 100%. route, to not go take, to, to actually go and learn a skill or get some things that actually make you money and, and not take out a lot of debt versus, listen, I went to four years. I Starting a business, I did not look back on my four years of education when I, when I, launched, when I launched Kingdom REI, our business. Yeah. But my point is that from my scenario, and I think hope this strikes a core with a lot of people, the reason more people don't go take the alternative route that we're going to talk about next is because a lot of times that's looked down on. Um, it's kind of like, oh, I don't want to go do that. What will my friends say? And what right. we want to wake you up to today is like, your those same friends are right. not going to be there at 60 years old. And trust right. me, your friends, when you're a millionaire, a multimillionaire, and you right. own hundreds of homes and yes. thousands of units like Carl and I do, yes. that uh, you won't, you'll won't. you have different friends, right? You hang 100%. out with different people. And so to think more long term yes not what is everyone thinking about when i'm 18 right. we want to right. help you think what's everyone who, who are you going to be hanging with when you're 35 yeah 100 percent. Right? yeah i mean and the question that always is asked for me when i talk to 18 year olds is that well i don't know what i want to do well that's okay too right so go out and, and into the world and and look around taste some things do some things get some experience take a gap year there's nothing wrong with trying some things out and then coming back and saying, okay, now I know I want to go to college or now I know I want to go into real estate and I don't want to go to college. I mean, there's nothing wrong with taking a moment to pause and figuring out what is going to bring you happiness to your life long term. Because again, at 18, you have no idea what you want to do. You're just listening to the people in your surrounding, your other 18 year old buddies and your parents saying, go to college, go rack up all this debt. And, and they're not responsible for paying that back. So let's talk about this alternative route, Carl. Yeah. Um, well, let me ask you this, actually, did you experience some of the same things I, I'm talking about um, in, in your upbringing and, and, yeah. and what was that like? Yeah, hundred percent. So, so my, so, you know, in my upbringing, it was, it was, you know, I, I got, came out of or came out of high school and it was told to me that I had to go to college. Uh, I went to college. I did the traditional route. Now, the, the, the good news is, is my dad, but right before I made that decision and I wanted to go to, to, to UNC, uh, right before I made that decision, he said, well, you can go to UNC and here's and, and he walked me through, you know, here's how much that's going to cost you. Here's how much you're going to have in debt. And, and again, at 18, it, it didn't strike a chord, but it, but the incentive was instead of you going here, you can buy a new car. Um, and, and that's what I did. You go, go to this university that's right in our backyard, get a new car. That is more, that, that's, that's a little bit more sexy than maybe going to the, to UNC. Uh, but it is, it's looked, it's almost looked down upon when you graduate from high school, if you do have grades or you are an athlete like myself and you go into a state school or a school in your backyard, you want to go to the, 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 the schools that have you know, the best facilities and, you know, outside of your, your, uh, your, your neighborhood. So, but, but again, you know, no one is paying that back, but you, and those decisions you have to make and those decisions can basically alter and shape your life long-term. Right. Yeah. That's huge, man. That's huge. So let's talk about this alternative route then, yeah. like talk about financial literacy, the, the yeah. pillars, um, if, if, you know, we're speaking to an 18 year old, but this is going to apply to, you know, guys yeah. in their thirties and forties, because a lot of people are still tr working that same job, have yeah. that debt, bought right. into the traditional American dream and honestly don't know how to get out of it. And so yeah. let's talk about these pillars, man, to financial literacy. Yeah. I, I think the biggest one, man, is, is let's start with interest, right? I mean, I make, I make a significant amount of money loaning it to people and charging them interest. It's called hard money loans. I do that all day long. Um, the bank gets rich by charging you interest. Uh, they don't have a problem lending you money and then saying, hey, you're gonna pay, you're gonna pay me back eight, nine, 10% interest over the course of your, over the course of 30 years. Credit card companies don't have a problem lending you money saying, hey, you're gonna pay 21% interest on your credit card. And so I, and not only 18 year olds, but I know, you know, guys that are coming out of college, guys that have been out of college for, 
quite some times that say, hey, I got a credit card. I got my credit card statement. This is my first credit card. I got my credit card statement in the mail. They must have did it wrong. I, I charged a thousand dollars last month and they're only charging me a hundred. Something what something went wrong. Well, no, that's not that did nothing went wrong. That's exactly how it's designed to be. They you want to go charge a thousand, they're gonna charge, they're gonna have you pay the minimum benefit for the rest of your life. And as that interest is accruing, you will never get out from under that debt. So interest to me is one of the is is one of the things that I say, hey, if you if you want to be financial, you need to understand how interest works. The second thing you need to understand is income to debt ratio. Right. And it sounds sounds uh, important. Well, it really is. Right. So how much money does my job make? Right. And how much money is, am I going to comfortably spend in my lifetime? And again, I sit down with 18 year olds to 50 year olds and I ask them this question, how much money you make? How much money you spend? And they don't know those two answers. To me, I have a, a running spreadsheet of all of the money that I make. And I have a running spreadsheet to the dollar of how much money I spend every month. So that I know that I am well beneath my means. Uh, and, then the, and then the third, and I'll, I'll, you know, the third one is once you are in a position where you're making money and you're spending money, you know, try to live off of 30% of your income. 33% is going to go to the government. 30% is going to should go to your expenses. And the other piece is, is investments. Uh, the, that last pillar is having your money work as hard as you are working is the key to financial literacy and financial freedom. Yeah, I love that. It's so key, the 30, 30, 30. I call it, I you haven't heard other people say 60, 40, right? Where you're everything, you got to get to a place where everything is in that 40 and you can invest, save and invest 60%. Now that would sound massive if you're only making, right. you know, 100K a year, it's going to be really hard to live off of 40K. Now, that's where hopefully we're going to get into this channel too, Carl, is just multiple ways to create other income streams, yeah. right? Because yeah. that's part of this. Like once we become right. financially literate, we realize, right. man, to really get out of this, yes. I need to be investing or saving 60%. Yes. Well, then we need to assess what do I need to cut out and what do yeah. I need to figure and what do I need to create to yeah. build multiple income streams in my life? Because yeah. Carl, how many income streams do you have, would you six. say right now? You have six. six. Yeah, six income streams. I don't have that many. I think we are up to three right now. Um, but that's what the wealthy do. We build multiple income streams. We're not relying on one. Most yeah. people who, again, are following traditional means, they got one income stream, their job, right. their W-2. Um, yep. And it's 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 apparently not going to be enough if you want to yeah. get to a level that, man, where you have the freedom, the ability to do right. whatever you want, impact whoever you want, travel, wherever you want. So it, yeah. it is, it is, it's available to you. And yeah. hopefully the earlier you're listening to this, the more we can set you up for yeah. financial success. Yeah. And, and to your point though, Ellis, I, I do think if you're making a hundred thousand dollars a year, you know, figure, figure it out. Right. I mean, it, it you know, living off of $30,000 doesn't sound very sexy, but if you can, if you can do that um, long-term, it, it's going to be really sexy, like you said, when you drive the Maserati to the gym. Yeah. Um, that when I was just, just you know, when I started off in my career, I was in sales for for a number of years. Still am, you know, you know, I was making you know almost a half a million dollars, and I was living in a one bedroom apartment in Michigan, you know, because I was taking all that money and banking it for an opportunity to invest. Uh, and that has set me up. So now that I'm, I'm 40 years old, multimillionaire with six streams of income coming in and don't have to worry about working any, every day, uh, can take, can be with my family. I got, you know, a wife and three kids. I can be with my family every day. That is what makes me happy. And, and that's why I decided, you know, early on to try to be financial free and, and, and educate myself on, on just financial just financial in, in general. So Carl, um, you're 18 or shoot, man, we're probably talking to 30 year olds. I, most of my friends, that's why we're creating this because what we're learning, we know um, most people aren't getting. Right. Besides this video, which you've given great stuff, interest, talking about interest, income to debt ratio, understanding that, breaking that down. Um, what are, what are, three resources, books, videos, like where, 
three next steps yeah that someone can get off this youtube channel and go and go buy go take action on yeah yeah so so the first book that that woke me up is rich dad poor dad by richard kirasaki um you know robert robert kiyosaki sorry sorry robert kiyosaki so so that that book and i i often refer back to that book even now um because that that is a uh that's a differentiator right so like if you if you start thinking about things that can impact you on places that you can invest your money that can pay you income that's a that's a game changer right so you know my wife and i own 33 properties um every month i get a check in the mailbox for not doing anything for those 33 properties that's a game changer my money is out there working just as hard as i'm working uh and and you know robert kind of walks you through in that book you know, do you have a W-2 job where you can't expense anything or do you, you know, have your own business and do you go after real estate um, and, and invest your money into real estate? So I would say, so I would say start there. Um, I'm, I'm, and I'm huge in real estate. So um, the next book I would, I would read is um, The Millionaire Mindset. Um, and I'm going to have to get back to you on the, on the author of that book. I think it's Harv. Um, I think his name is Harv. But 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 what we do uh, as people is we often tell ourselves these lies about money, right? You can't you can't be religious and have wealth. You can't be uh, a, a gift giver and have wealth. You can't be a nice person and have wealth. Uh, money is the root of all evil. Um, all of these things that we tell ourselves, I can't afford it. Um, all of these things that we tell ourselves are simply not true. And when you break those things down in your mind, your mind starts operating in a different capacity and you will start, you then start attracting wealth. So I would, I would start with those. Definitely. It's called the things. secrets of the millionaire mind by T. There you, there you go. Thank yeah. you. We'll link all that down below too. Um, yes. I'm going to add one. I'm going to add two real quick. Um, yeah. How to Be a Capitalist Without Any Capital by Nathan Latka. I think the young people will really like the way he writes. Kind of a new age, how to create multiple streams of income outside of real estate. Now we live in a digital age. Robert Kiyosaki wrote that book. Crypto, the blockchain, all of these different things weren't even yes. on the scene yet. There's just so many ways, the internet, YouTube, yes. um, to create multiple income streams out there that I think this guy does a really good job of bringing in. And then the 10X Rule by Grant Cardone. The book changed my life, changed a lot of people's life. Thinking bigger. You got to change your mindset for a lot of this to go down. Um, so that's all really good. Um, Carl, any closing thoughts here? Yeah, I, I would just say take 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 the uh, take life uh, by the reins and, and get educated. Um, it's not hard to find YouTube videos and contents and books and, and other things. You know, pause for a second if you're 18, really get educated on, on the decisions that you're going to make right now that are going to impact you for the rest of your life. If you're in your mid-20s, early 30s, and you're working that day-to-day -day job, pause maybe on the weekend. Don't go out. Don't watch Netflix and educate yourself on financial literacy uh, and, and start making small changes. Because, I mean, I work with a lot of people that make just very small changes that can impact their lives for the rest of their lives. Excellent word. Uh, hey, if you enjoyed this, make sure you hit the like button on this video. We're grateful for it. Carl, let's keep making great videos for these folks, man. We'll link everything below. Awesome.